something came up, but I've got to go for now. I'll sing the rest next time. Bye. Hello everyone, Noah Novels here. And for today's video, I will be doing a brief spoiler-free review on Kodoro Ichikoshi's AI The Somnium Files. The reason for this review being brief is... But I still want to keep the visual novel content on my channel alive. So it's time to fight through the numbness in my right hand and start talking about the story of this sci-fi murder mystery game. I would rather be sleeping. And I know AI The Somnium Files doesn't technically count as a pure VN because of its use of gameplay, but I feel like its presentation is still visual novel-like enough a good chunk of the time for me to talk about it as such. But anyways, the story. AI The Somnium Files takes place in Tokyo, albeit in the near future and with great technological advancement. Our main character is Special Agent Kaname Date, a member of the Top Secret Advanced Brain Investigation Squad of the Police Department, or ABYSS for short. ABYSS investigates crimes using the process of sinking, which allows the sinker, in this game's case Date, to enter the dreams of the one being synced and explore for clues within the subject's subconscious. A couple more things to know about Date is that he has no memory of his life past six years from the start of the game's story, and his original left eye is gone. In its place, he has a cybernetic eye which contains an artificial intelligence named Aiba who acts as Date's partner, assisting him with his investigations in the real world and the world of Somnium, the dreams Date explores throughout the game. Date is put in charge of investigating the murder of one Shoko Nadami, a woman he personally knows. What makes this murder peculiar is the fact that Shoko's corpse is missing her left eye, and this fact makes it eerily similar to a series of unsolved murders from six years ago known as the Cyclops serial killings, which resulted in every victim's right eye being missing upon being found. What I actually want to talk about today is an unsolved mystery that I've been thinking about lately. Have you guys all heard about that awful incident that happened six years ago? The murder case where four corpses were found in the Akigawa Valley. That's right, the Cyclops serial killings. A Cyclops is a one-eyed giant that appears in Greek mythology. The killer signed a letter they sent to the media as Cyclops. That's why they call it the Cyclops Serial Killings. The four victims were all young women. They were all made to look like a Cyclops missing an eye. The culprit is still at large. No leads or clues either. Date and Aiba are taken on a journey filled with lies, secrets, drama, action, mystery, and death. And as they attempt to figure out the identity of this new killer, they may find themselves discovering the truth about Date's forgotten past. Sci-fi and murder mystery are two of my favorite things, but they are oh so hard to pull off right. Never mind when you combine the two, but Kodoro Ichikoshi managed to do just that. The technologically advanced setting of AI story makes for a compelling backdrop for this murder mystery story to take place in. A murder mystery that takes full advantage of the unique technological facets of this game's story. The mystery itself is very well constructed, with just enough hints spread throughout the various routes of the game which allows players to slowly understand the intricacies of this game's setting, and also the mystery that's unfolding within it. By the end of the game, I was actually able to figure out the answers to all the game's major mysteries. But I don't mean that in a the game made it obvious way, I mean it as I was able to put together everything the game gave me to come to this satisfying conclusion on my own, before the game confirmed my suspicions during the final acts of the story. It doesn't give you cheap cop-out answers using sci-fi or technology nonsense. If any aspect to this game's technology, setting, or anything else unique to this game is required to fully grasp the answers to the mysteries of the story, it will make sure to properly explain and build up these elements without giving anything away. There were a couple info dumpy sections towards the end which is pretty standard for stories involving mystery. I'm not a huge fan of that sort of thing but I understand why it's done and it's not egregious in this game. By the time they happen, you pretty much understand everything. They're more to give emotional context to stuff that's happening and also explaining any loose threads or confusing aspects. I really enjoyed this cast of characters. Date and Aiba make for a great leading pair, with really fun and entertaining chemistry between one another while still being interesting characters in their own rights. Can you please take me with you? As long as I have Wi-Fi, I don't need anything else. Sorry, we can't have pets. Hm. Cold-hearted old man. 
I would say Date is more vital to Aiba as a character than Aiba is to Date, but they spend the entire game together anyway, so that's a moot point. Date is an extremely funny but also nuanced protagonist. While he will be spending a majority of the game making quips or objectively observing the events of this mysterious story unfold, it's when the story decides to threaten what's dear to him do we really get to see him shine. Seeing his more serious moments when the story really gets going in certain aspects makes for such a jarring but compelling contrast to his usual self. And pairing that with his mysterious past that gets explored in greater detail throughout the game's story makes for a standout main character. I wouldn't say he's like the most complex main character ever written, but he's interesting and entertaining enough for me to really enjoy his presence throughout the story. There's only one thing about him I don't like. He is so damn pervy so much of the time. You watch weird videos when I'm not around, don't you? Weird videos? Something about cuckoldry? No, 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 no. Those are husbandry videos. You know, like uh, animal husbandry, uh, raising livestock. Anyway, don't touch my computer without permission. And when the game's in normal, laid-back scenes, it's fine. Honestly, it's really funny, if not childish at times. But in a weird way, it does add to his charm, for the most part. But then you'll be at the end of a certain story route, in a life-or-death confrontation, on the cusp of potentially reaching the truth behind so much of what's happened in this story. And then Aiba will tell Date there's a porn magazine on the ground. And he will screech, PORNO MAG! And whip around the screen with supersonic speed. And every bit of tension is broken. I'm not saying you have to remove this part of his personality, but having Dante just retain levity for more than two minutes at a time besides the final moments of the story would have been nice. Thankfully, his good aspects and the rest of the cast do make up for this flaw in his writing. The rest of the cast of characters are all very interesting and enjoyable to watch interact with Dante and one another. What's really cool is exploring the connections between characters as the game goes on and seeing how even the two most seemingly unrelated characters can share a connection. While not every character in this game is going to get a fully fleshed out character arc, I do think they're all entertaining in their own unique ways, serve their purpose in the story well without feeling like just a plot device, save for like maybe one or two characters, and the characters who do get dedicated story roots focused on them have extremely well written character arcs and development that go together nicely with the mystery solving aspects of the game. So yeah, overall you have a solid sci-fi murder mystery with a likable main character and a great cast of well written and interesting support characters who factor into the story. Some of the story routes are focused on being emotional character studies, while still giving glimpses of the answer to the larger mysteries at hand, while other routes feel more focused on the mystery-solving aspect while still putting the characters through emotional development through escalating situations. This all comes together with writing that is witty when it wants to be, and complex and intense when the time calls for it, very fitting for this game's exciting, fun, and mysterious atmosphere. In the end, I had a blast with the story of AI The Somnium Files. Let's talk about the gameplay. There are two, or I guess you could say three, core styles of gameplay when you're not going through visual novel-like scenes. Point and click sections, the more exploring-focused Somnium stages, and quick time events for action scenes. The point and click part is pretty self-explanatory. You look around your environment, click on things of interest to advance the scenes, and continue to unravel the mystery to the best of your ability with Iba's assistance and banter. It's fun and functional. One thing I was really impressed with is the level of detail in the environments of the game. Seriously, I recommend you genuinely click on everything in any new given environment a minimum of two times, preferably more depending on what you're clicking on. You run the risk of missing out on some amazingly hilarious dialogue and running gags if you don't. The Somnium stages are easily the most exciting parts of the game. Getting to explore the dreams of the different suspects or people of interest and seeing all the vastly different settings and atmospheres, ranging from borderline horror to video game themed, makes for a compelling time. In these dreams, you have to perform certain actions to unlock mental locks to get as many clues and information out of who you're syncing with at the time. Oh, and you have a time limit of 6 minutes. Exploring these bizarre but intricate dream worlds which all represent what the characters are going through or thinking about is exciting and such a unique way to explore detective work in a mystery story, and I love it. I will say though, sometimes I felt like what you had to do was kind of random or unclear, but that's probably because dreams are random or unclear in nature. So it makes sense, but I did find myself frustrated during a couple moments of certain Somniums when I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do and kept having to retry. But overall, the Somnium stages were a fantastic way of exploring the mystery to this game's story. The quick time events aren't a huge part of the game, they just come up during certain action segments. In concept, they're really cool and make great use of the unique set locations and abilities of the characters involved. 
and they still are that, but most of them are bogged down by heavy over-explaining or telegraphing, repetitive transitions or visual effects that I could've just been shown once to fully grasp what the game was trying to convey, and the aforementioned breaking of tension by Pervy Date. I still enjoyed them, but I wish they were executed in a better way to feel more fast-paced and exciting. Now onto the artwork and other aspects of this visual novel. I'm not really the greatest when talking about what makes artwork good, but I think AI The Somnium Files has great artwork. The character designs are all really cool and reflect aspects of their personalities well. And the backgrounds of this game are really detailed and pretty. The lighting for certain locations at night especially felt really atmospheric. When the game switches from its visual novel style of presentation to regular cutscenes, eh, it still looks good, but certain character movements and facial expressions can be pretty janky. To be fair, this is probably the same during the visual novel-like scenes, but it's less easy to notice since you can kind of look all around the screen during those moments and you have to focus on reading the dialogue. Whereas during the cutscenes, you're just watching a scene play out. Still, it's nothing that ruins the experience, it's just something that's awkward and noticeable. Still nowhere near as bad as Zero Time Dilemma's cutscenes, though. As for the music, once again, I'm not great at describing what makes music good, but the soundtrack to AI The Somnium Files is great. You have a wide variety of different tracks that match the different emotional beats of the story, and the tracks for the Somnium stages are exceptional standouts in my opinion. They just really enforce the intended atmosphere of whatever Somnium you're exploring, and there are a few of them I listen to quite frequently on Spotify. The music is fitting for the technologically advanced setting and hits all the intended emotional beats to make every scene achieve whatever intended emotional response they were going for. The UI of this game is also really good. It fits with the setting and atmosphere of the story, and it's easy to navigate. And that's about all I need. And the flow track to keep track of all the different branching story paths, depending on what actions you take in Somnium and what answers you arrive at through them, made navigating the complicated story easy and enjoyable. So to wrap things up, with AI The Somnium Files, you have a thrilling and well-written sci-fi murder mystery hybrid with a compelling cast of characters to get attached to. Despite some minor issues with Date's character writing, the janky at times presentation, and the potentially frustrating moments of certain Somniums, the unique setting and way this game tackles its murder mystery story more than makes up for any gripes I had, and managed to still make me fall in love with this game. I give AI The Somnium Files a 7 out of 10. I also cannot wait now to get into the sequel. At least that's what I said when I typed up this script. However, as of recording this audio, I've gotten a decent amount into its sequel, Nirvana Initiative. And it is amazing. Uh, I don't want to say, like, until I finished it that I like it more than the first, but if nothing else, it's equal to the first in my opinion. And the insanity of the sci-fi concepts and the mystery, holy crap, my mind is reeling just trying to comprehend it all. Anyways, I'm going off script, and if I tried to talk, you know, in an actually eloquent way about why I like the sequel so much without actually reading a pre-made script, it would be horrible, as you can probably tell from the way I'm struggling to come up with coherent sentences. But uh, I don't want to make any promises, but do not be surprised if one of my future videos is a review on the sequel, because uh, I have a lot of thoughts on it so far. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this is a bit shorter than my average visual novel review, but I hope I still did a good job at explaining why I enjoyed AI The Somnium Files and why you should try it if you haven't played it yourself. If you have, please tell me what you thought of the game in my review in the comments down below. And if you want to see more content from me in the future, primarily being visual novel reviews and other anime related content, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other videos. And thank you to Prof.Giver for editing this video, allowing me to keep visual novel content coming on my channel even when my right hand is making it hard for me to do computer stuff. A link to his channel is in the description, and he actually has a quite lengthy video series on AI The Somnium Files as well, and a plethora of other content. Thank you to everyone for watching, and until my next video, see you guys. Okay, that's enough for today! Thank you everyone! And I'll definitely be uploading weekly, so keep your eyes open and stay tuned! Unless I get abducted or something, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already! If you don't subscribe, you'll make me so aggro! <laughs> Thank you for watching! See ya!